is the real Jim Walcott. We thought that it would be appropriate now, when Jim finds himself in the kind of danger that more and more seems to be part of this job we love, to take a look at who that man really is. Isn't she showing a little too much cleavage? No. No TV hype, but the kind of honest portrait that Jim himself would want to see. The truth. The high school was a real challenge for Jim. Uh, he was a friendly kid with a, a big smile, but he always wondered whether there was anything behind those white teeth. Jim had these uh, perfectly white teeth and uh, a great voice. I counseled him to stay away from the more intellectually challenging fields and uh, go into something where he could use his voice or his uh, teeth or uh, best scenario, both. Hi there, I'm the Rocket. Jim came to work for Rocket Burger in 1981 as the voice of the Rocket drive through speaker. Uh, Rockets needed to do something with their image, so we initiated the Rocket speaker and really felt that his voice was what Rockets stood for. Can I get you fries with that Rocket Burger? Jim came on at Rockets just before the chain went into bankruptcy. In the audit that went along with the bankruptcy proceedings, it was argued at one point that some of the public had turned off on Rocket Burgers because Jim's voice made them nauseous. Jim's big break came in easy listening radio. And that was the fifth dimension with up, up, but away. I said to my old lady last night, how would you like to ride my beautiful balloon? However, Jim would soon face the challenges of the celebrity spotlight. A sexual encounter with an underage listener led to an arrest in 1985. But in 1986, Jim found Jesus Christ and a new career. But his embrace of the Almighty led Jim into the inevitable confrontation with the devil. And a car accident due to alcohol and painkillers in which Jim was found driving without any clothes on and babbling incoherently about Jesus and a young woman. This led to his removal from the church and personal bankruptcy. Jim's economic collapse was turned around by his first marriage to a dental hygienist who supported him. And shortly after that, a second marriage to an unemployed lottery winner led to a conviction for bigamy. Then in 1991, Jim Walcott got his big break as a traffic analyst for CXRA in Manitoba. When charged for offering free helicopter rides to underage female viewers in exchange for sexual favors, Jim's media career faltered, but only temporarily, because Jim's audience appeal as a traffic analyst proved indestructible. And in 1993, Jim Walcott realized his ultimate dream, the anchor spot on a network news desk. Hair! What the hell is hair? Mr. President, how do you feel about the war? How do you feel about the war? Jim Walcott became the consummate anchor. No story too big, no detail too small. 